and what I think has been lacking. If we're really, if we're really serious about changing the trajectory of poverty and making sure we're expanding access and opportunity, which is the heart of why I'm running, uh, we have to do, we have to look at things on a systemic level. And, that, and that's going to focus on three things. One, expanding uh, access and uh, education opportunities. So this is a personal story to me. From about the second through the eighth grade, I was in learning disability classes. And I struggled early on in school. So some of my teachers, many of my counselors said that I wasn't going to go to college. They said that I, I didn't have that ability. Luckily, I'm blessed enough to have two strong parents, particularly a strong mother, who said uh, they don't get to define you by their narrow expectations. You define yourself for yourself, by yourself. And because of their guidance, because of their support, because of their ability to push back, I'm here today. And, and not only graduated from uh, school, I graduated from electrical engineering, and I went on a law school. And so, but there's so many other kids that have a different story, have a different outcome, because they, their parents don't know how to fight back, to, or they don't have the exposure and the resources. This is my passion for really wanting to get involved, to expand access to people. So while I was at the University of Cincinnati, um, I implemented and led a new program that's permanently funded called the UC Scholars Academy. And this concept is simple. It's to, work in, it's to work with and empower our kids so they can fulfill their full potential. And it's a leadership development program over the summer where we not only let them work with employers, but they're also focused on their academics. And they're pushed harder than they've ever been pushed. And I was proud when the, when the students got out and got done with the program, they went back to the principal, Captain Wright, and said, a few said, you know, we have some problems we want to help you solve here. And they were empowered to take back their community. That's how you really change kids' lives. You empower them, you expose them to new opportunities, to new possibilities. We have to do that in a systemic way. So I'm going to push, I'm going to work with corporations, I'm going to work with others to give more internship opportunities to our kids and start it off early on, start it off in high school and incorporate that on with their learning. Because you can't do this in a, in a one-off. We have some great programs that go on in the city, but they're not, they're not, they're not done in a systemic way that actually connects it. We also want to make sure with education that we have access, that we're giving kids uh, access to the internet and information. There's a real digital divide. So if you're in a community and you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have broadband, you're going to be behind. So one of my initiatives that, that we're definitely going to get done, that we can get done through a public-private partnership, is high-speed broadband and Wi-Fi access that will be available to all, and we're going to make sure it's available in lower-income communities. Because if it's not available, you're going to be behind. You can't compete in a world where you don't have access to the internet. Second, uh, transportation. You know, you can't be a city of the 21st century with a 20th century infrastructure. And not only do we have a 20th century infrastructure, it's from the 1950s. So we are way behind. And we have to move and, catch, and move and catch up quickly. City Hall and city leaders have not taken any leadership in any way. No one's laid out a plan. This is what we're going to do under a Richardson administration. Uh, we're going to move forward with the updated version of the Metro Moves plan. I still believe that's the best plan we've had. Uh, that plan went down, but let me tell you why it went down. Uh, first of all, it was 15 years ago. That's the most important fact. Uh, but even with that, it was, it was rushed out very quickly. It was right after 9-11. It was right after the disturbances and the riots in the city. It was a lot of unique things that were going on at that time that I don't think you can measure to say that, it, that, that it's going to fail now. And most importantly, there's been no leadership to push it. When you have no leadership to push it, of course it, you know, of course it won't get accomplished. Everything starts and ends with leadership. When you hear people talk about experience and, and